Hi guys, let's block this light. I figured I would sit down and give you guys a video of how I found out that I had thyroid cancer. Let's hop in the chair and start off the vlog. Whew! Alright, so first let me start off by saying that I am filming this on my camera. I think the audio quality is really bad, so please bear with me. I'm going to try to do this in one take because again, I don't have editing software, but Here's my story, and I wrote some notes so that I know what to tell you guys. Um, before I had found out that I had thyroid cancer, I had weight issues for about eight years. There was one year I was um, about 189 pounds, and the next year I would be 119. The following year I'd be 150. The next year I'd be 100, and we could not figure out what was going on with my body. Went to the doctor and did blood work, did, you know, scans, they found nothing. So, um, fast forward to January of 2013, I was on my way back from Columbus, Ohio. I left really late, or I say really early in the morning, I left about 12, 31 o'clock in the morning, and um, I was staying with a friend, and her daughter actually had like a panic attack about me leaving. Um, that should have told me something because this little girl just doesn't act like that for no reason. So I promised her I'd be safe and then I would call her or text her when I got home. About an hour into my drive, I was rocking out to the radio and hit a patch of ice going 71 south. Um, by hitting the pothole, I hit a pothole and then a patch of ice and I wound up going all the way over into 71 northbound almost head on with a semi truck, totally freaked out, turned to a hard right, went back across the median, back across 71 South, down into the ditch and hit a metal culvert. At the time, Knox was about four or five months old. Um, I was $300 away from totaling my car, if that tells you how bad my car was. Called several friends, practically everybody I knew in Columbus to see if they could come get me, take me to the emergency room. You know, I'd call the cops before then and everybody was too tired or too busy or whatever. And it really made me reevaluate who I was important to. So I wound up calling Joe, who was at work, as you guys know now, he's, he's at Fort Knox. And that is a five, five and a half hour drive from uh, Columbus, Ohio. So the cops took me back to the little substation of um, this little town called Wilmington. And we sat there for about five hours. Once he got there, by that time the car had already been towed away, whatever. And we went back to my friend's house who had stayed with. And she couldn't come get me because she had two children who had school the next day. So I get that. Um, upon arriving at our house, we dropped off Knox. We went to the ER and my neck was hurting so bad. I, um, actually bruised my heart and bruised my lungs from hitting the uh, dashboard really bad. And, um, or hitting the steering wheel. The airbag did not go off because I hit the front right fender, passenger fender, and it only goes off if you hit head on. And, um, so, um, uh, Callie's scratching at the door, so if you see me looking this way, that's why. Callie, girl, no, no, no. Callie! And so, they did some scans of my neck, and, um, they didn't tell me anything at the time. Um, I did have a mild concussion. Like I said, it bruised my heart, it bruised my lungs, had some bruising. Knox was completely fine. And, um, later on that day, um, we went ahead and drove home. I had to leave the car in Columbus. The following day... I went to my family doctor who ordered some additional scans. This was January 26 of 2013. Um, it took several days to get the scans back. And sorry, I'm not looking at the camera. I'm just trying to focus. It took several days to get scans back. And when they did, he told me he was referring me to an ENT, an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Didn't think anything of it. No big deal. Um, in, the, in the meantime, um, they had got my lab results from the hospital. Um, in Columbus, and then they also got lab results because he sent me for scans. Um, sorry, I got a text Joey to tell him to come get Callie. And so, I hate doing this because I can't edit this vlog. Oh, here she is. Come here, Callie girl. Oh, no. So, in the meantime, I was scheduled to go see an ENT here in Louisville. And no big deal. Um, and also get um, 
a scan on my neck. So they, they sent me for that scan. By the time I got to the ENT, I already had all the blood work done, the, the CT, the MRI, the ultrasound, everything needed. What they did not tell me is what type of ENT I was going to. And the way that I found out that I had cancer was rude, inconsiderate, thoughtless. I, I don't know. So we pulled up to the Baptist Hospital here in Louisville and pulled up to this address. Didn't think anything of it. Had my jeans, whatever. Got out of the car, looked at Joe, turned around to look at the building, and it said ENT Oncology Center. And I physically fell to my knee in the parking lot <clears throat> so hard I put holes in my right knee. And I looked at Joe and I said, I have cancer. He's like, what are you talking about? No, you don't. I'm like, look at the building. It said ENT Oncology Center. Like, why would I be going to this type of ENT? So we go in, fill out all the paperwork. They mailed it. In, oh, excuse me. They mailed it in ahead of time, so I just had to give in the paperwork. And we go back, and the ENT says his name. Don't want to give his name. And um, he puts his hand on my knee, and he said, I'm sorry to tell you that um, you do have cancer, but you have thyroid cancer. And if you want to get any kind of cancer, this is the best cancer you can get. Thyroid cancer is the best cancer. So if you want to get cancer, this is the kind you want to get. Um, say I'm sitting in the chair. The doctor is where you as the camera are. And Joe is back over here a bit. And his eyes got huge. I looked at the doctor and said, I don't care if I have effing toenail cancer. Cancer is cancer. And who who wants cancer? Who says, oh, I want cancer, but, you know, can you give me the good kind? I want to make sure it's good. So, I just, I don't fathom ever telling somebody they have a good cancer. I went to Walmart after that. I We had to get something from Walmart. We walked in and she said, hi, welcome to Walmart. How can I help you? I said, oh, I'm here to get cancer, but I need a good kind. And it was just my sarcasm and I guess my defense mechanism setting in. And um, we went home. I didn't tell anybody for um, several weeks. While we, were at, while we were there, he went ahead and scheduled for a PT or a partial thyroidectomy. Um, he also wanted to do an FNA, which is a fine needle aspiration where they take needles and they, they poke you, but it's not just one. They can go in anywhere from 7 to 28 times because they want to poke all through your neck and pull out, you know, samples. Um, I remember telling him, no, you're not going to do that. If you've got to take it out anyway, you can take it out. You can poke the hell out of it once it's out, but I, I have enough needles. I've had enough surgeries in my life, and yes, I have, I have 12 tattoos, but it's a little different getting a, a needle blood work shots than it is here. This is like road rash and I get something pretty in the end. I don't get anything pretty after this. So um, they schedule my surgery. By this time, my, my accident was for, uh, January 26th. I didn't see the ENT until the end of March, beginning of, I mean, the end of February, beginning of March. And they scheduled my thyroidectomy for April 17th. Went home. I didn't tell any of my family. I didn't tell anyone. Um, I was working at the time. I went back to work. I didn't say anything to my employer. I worked for an ophthalmic um, office and eye center, and I did with glaucoma and cataracts and you know all that kind of stuff. And um, Callie, she's gonna make this black. There we go. And so I probably spent the next month before. I think I told told my boss about two weeks beforehand. So. I was just dumbfounded. I wanted to get my hands on any kind of research that I could get my hands on. I wanted to know everything I could about FICA, thyroid cancer. Um, and he told me, you know, I told him at the time too, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, trying not to go back and forth, that I wanted a full thyroidectomy. I didn't want to part. Oh, I went back one more time to talk to him before my surgery to make sure everything was okay. And I told him, upon the research I had read, I had found several support groups on Facebook that I did not want a PT. I wanted a TT, a total thyroidectomy, because number one, I was going to be on Synthroid, whether I had a half or a whole thyroid. Number two, everything that I had read about FICA and thyroidectomies, everybody, and I mean everybody who's ever had a PT, partial within three months to three years has had to go back in 
and have a total. And you're going to slice my neck open, you're going to do it once, and that's it. One and done. So he said, well, I'll give you time to think about it. So that's fine. Told my boss, and my boss being an ophthalmologist like he was, recommended a really good surgeon. And ironically, he was the ENT that I was told to go to. He also recommended an amazing endo, which is an endocrinologist. They specialize in the endocrine system, diabetes, thyroid. So the morning, um, sorry, my family found out that actually that I had thyroid cancer because when I was talking with these support groups, I did not realize that one of them was not a closed group, meaning I could post whatever I wanted in a closed group and it wouldn't show up on my news feeds. However, the one was an open to everybody. So when I was posting and asking questions, Callie, um, it would show up on my parents' feed. And my, my mom was getting calls. My dad was getting calls. Nobody was telling me, but my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my friends were all calling my mom and my dad going, what the hell's going on? What's wrong with Kelly? So I had to tell my parents before I really wanted to, which was fine. Um, they were supportive. My mom and my dad or my adoptive mom and my biological father, they drove up and um, they were with me for the surgery. Um, the morning of my surgery, I went in and I do have 15 piercings throughout the body. That's another story. And I refused to take certain piercings out because after all, they were going to be cutting from my neck up and I didn't need to take other piercings out. So um, he came in, the nurse came in and said, okay, so we're doing a PT on the left lobe. And I said, no. First of all, it's in the right lobe. <coughs> oh, no, it was the left lobe. I said, but we're doing a total. She's like, no. And she sat there and argued, and she said some really ugly things about certain piercings that I have. And my mom and my dad, which certain piercings I don't want my dad to know that I have. Um, my parents were awesome, and they were very supportive, and they pretty much told the nurse to get the hell out and don't come back. So the doctor came in, and he said, are you sure? You're going to have to be on Synthroid. Again, I'm going to have to be on Synthroid for the rest of my life. Um... So surgery was done and over and I woke up and when I came to was able to talk to the doctor and he said, you know, you're a very, you're a very bright girl, woman. Um, you not only had cancer in your left lobe, you had a type of thyroid disease in your right lobe. On top of that, the cancer that you had was, here comes Kelly, the cancer that you have was totally encapsulated. Um, as an example, a boiled egg, the yolk inside the boiled egg is encapsulated. It can't get out of the slimy, snotty part of the egg. So by refusing the FNA, the fine needle aspiration, I had prevented myself from having the cancer spread. Um, if they had gone in with a fine needle aspiration and poked through the, the thyroid and pulled it out, it now has an exit for the cancer cells to have spread. So do your research, people. If you have to have, I don't care if you have to have tons of stuff, do your research. So I saved myself there, as well as um, I had follicular variant papillary carcinoma hyperthyroidism in the left lobe. It was stage 2B. It was almost to stage um, 3. I never heard of a A, B, or C, but um, I'd had it for about three, three and a half years, although I was sick for eight. And then the right lobe, I had had Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is a hypothyroidism. And the difference between hyper and hypo, hypothyroidism, you get tired, you're sluggish, you just have no energy, um, you gain weight. They say hypo-hippo. Hyperthyroidism, you have a lot of energy. You can't sleep. Um, think of a child who has a high metabolism. You're very thin. So that was the reason that they were never able to figure out what was wrong with my thyroid. As my endo explained after my thyroidectomy, it was like my foot was on the brake and the gas at the same time. And so whenever they would do lab work or stuff, they just couldn't tell through my lab. So I needed those scans, which I had never been given the opportunity to have before. Are we still recording? Yes. Awesome. So, ooh, sorry. So um, that was done. Um, I was, let's see if I can even show you guys. I think I've showed you in the past and this light is not helping. They actually cut me from about here, if I can feel, oh, from here all the way to here. You see a white dot and that white dot is um, where the drainage tube was or as we call it, the blood grenade. They inserted the tube, they stitched all this up and I had a tube that went down, it was taped to my chest, underneath my breast, down my ribs and a little looked like really a grenade that you could see through a squishy and I had to um, measure the output which was blood 
um, measure the output every day and then write it down and take it back and I wasn't able to get it out at the first visit, the first post-op visit, because I hadn't had enough fluid drain. If you've ever seen anybody have a breast surgery or any kind of major surgery, um, they usually have tubes, and it's just to help to get the excess fluid from swelling out. So after my second visit, they took everything out, and my scar is amazing. You can't see um, even the white dot. I notice it's me. Um, so that was that. I was recommended, um, I was sent from the ENT to my endo, and um, so my endo suggested I have something called RAI. RAI is radioactive iodine. Radioactive. And while working at the eye center, one of our patients was, or is, a um, gynecological oncologist. And so I... Um, emailed Dr. Mike over my my pathology report and he said Kel you know what it's up to you it doesn't look like it had spread anywhere I wouldn't worry about it because after all it is radioactive and unlike chemo that kills everything now radiation um, may show signs 10 years later you may be fine for 10 years and then the adverse effects will show up but they may show up later so I denied it against the wishes of my endocrinologist. Um, did my blood work, everything was fine, um, got one year post-op and was considered in remission. It was fantastic. It did take a while to get my body used to Synthroid. Synthroid is essentially synthetic thyroid, fake thyroid, like a fake arm or prosthetic arm. It's You have no thyroid, you have to have this thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, so they give you Synthroid. About 14, 15 months after surgery, I wasn't feeling right. Didn't feel good, didn't do anything, couldn't do anything. I felt like I did exactly before surgery. Um, I had developed several issues. Um, I had brain fog afterwards. It was memories, issues I was having. Um, I would be folding laundry, and I didn't realize, I couldn't remember if the laundry was clean or dirty. Um, I'd be just so confused. I would look at Joe and be totally scared out of my mind because I had no idea who he was. And it was horrible for him, horrible for me. Um, there were times I couldn't drive. I couldn't go pick up Bella for my visitation, and that was hard. Several times I, like, I saw the light was red. I knew red meant stop, but my brain just couldn't get there. Developed um, diverticulitis, uh, celiacs, gastrointestinal issues, IBS. Um, I now have osteoarthritis. In the process of taking the thyroid out, they meant they they had to remove two pair or one pair of thyroid. That particular pair of thyroid helped my body break down um, calcium. Afterwards, after any type of thyroid, whether it's a partial or total, they give you tums because it has calcium in it. And I woke up a couple days after surgery, and I was like. This, I just, I look like I had a stroke. I could not, I could not move. I actually laughed. And it was the day that my parents went home. And sadly, I was really angry and sad. My parents left anyway. So, over that time, I had taken a lot of calcium. And my body could not break it down. So, anytime I ate or drank any type of calcium, my body immediately turned it into kidney stones. And when I could put the two and two together to realize, oh, shit. This is what's causing it. I stopped taking Tums. I stopped eating calcium. Um, I also developed an allergy to milk, some lactose intolerant. I have so many medical issues. All the doctors say, oh, it has nothing to do with your thyroid. Really? Because I was perfectly effing healthy and happy before my thyroid was gone. And thyroid is so important to your body. Callie, every time she comes over here, I try to grab her. So... 16 months post-op, I was told I needed to have RAI, radioactive iodine. And it's not as simple as just having radioactive iodine. You have to go on a diet called an LID. Excuse me. An LID is a low iodine diet, or diet, which is not a no iodine diet, a low iodine diet. Your thyroid cells, whether good or bad, feed off of iodine. So the purpose is strip your body as, of as much iodine as possible. They will give you radioactive iodine, which is literally the size of a Tylenol gel cap. You put that in your mouth and then your thyroid cells, good or bad, which I didn't have